first of all should the senior and key government official be paid properly yes they should be because it's a tough time inflationary pressures are up and people need to be compensated properly second question is that does this give a good signal when the economy is shrinking and people are suffering due to inflation uh, i don't think so the size of large size of the government the continuation of perks and privileges and increase of salaries in fact a conscientious civil servant uh, should uh, uh, say no to it themselves uh, that's what happens in other economies that unless and until you give a signal that you are seriously looking at this unprecedented economic pressure and are willing to sacrifice at the higher levels then people can follow uh, the things now what would happen is that people who are enjoying perks and privileges uh, there would be very little impact of inflation and the recent rise in tariffs of utilities because they have you know the fixed uh, 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 quotas which pay for it the people who are in private sector taking salary in cash would actually have their income slashed so that leads to a sense of deprivation among large number of people in the private space and government should be cognizant of that they need to set the example by themselves and then ask people to sacrifice well first of all we need to all of us need to understand that the partnership or the lending arrangement with imf is not about changing the structure of economy or changing the uh, uh, growth Uh, uh, strategies of the country imf basically asks us to demonstrate a fiscal discipline which is in line with the best practices in the world uh, issues like uh, open up exchange rate to market forces issues like don't impose unnecessary import or you know tariffs indirect tariffs so that free trade can take place keep the budget deficit in the range of 4 to 5% now these are standards which they apply globally and in return uh, they give you money to pay your external liabilities because countries only go to imf for a bailout somehow an impression is being created that getting into a standby arrangement means that economy economic revival uh, is on the cards economic revival basically is the responsibility of the uh, uh, government itself for the policies which are longer term which are consistent which are sustained imf's partnership only gives a signal of stability to the markets which markets have responded positively because markets respond negatively to two things one is the lack of policy inconsistency of policy and prevailing uncertainty we have suffered a lot for the 9 months uncertainty because we kept on giving statements that we are getting into a fund program and then that was not materializing now prime minister has basically intervened himself at the highest level which is nice it's a positive signal but prime minister is not the interlocutor to a lender at the end of the day economic team needs to be strengthened to inspire confidence of not only imf but other institutions and bond markets and investors so that people can trust basically uh, the economic team for the medium term government always deals with trade offs now the trade off is that can you basically progressively expand the tax base which has a political cost or you continue adding more taxes and particularly indirect taxes to the people who are already paying taxes now input costs go up when the taxes go up on the uh, 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 existing tax payers particularly in pakistan where majority of the taxes are collected from private sector and industry so it was government's choice perhaps because of the election year or whatever imf does not dictate you who to tax in fact they advise you to expand the tax base increase tax to gdp ratio 
now it is the choice of the client host country that how they go about it unfortunately uh, pakistan has not you know really gone about you know eliminating the lots of subsidies and exemptions which we offer to so called priority sectors we have gone to raise the income tax level of the people who are already pay paying reasonably high tax now this my year i don't think will actually it will add to the cost of doing business clients will pass on the business, companies will pass on the cost to the clients clients income is already reduced because of you know inflationary pressures so demand will further stress people will stop buying you know uh, 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 things which they used to do and that will not lead to an expansion in the economy in fact that will slow down the economic activity we need to understand that you know structural reforms actually the what's the problem the problem is that current structure of our economy is not delivering what is the need of the country a it's not bringing enough jobs to 2.5 million young people coming in the labor market every year b it's not generating enough dollar inflow to match our import bills and external liabilities c it is not adding production and productivity to feed 250 million people and their needs and d it's not moving towards the knowledge economy and value addition now these are structural guidelines which pakistan needs to realign its economy to move from a service or trading oriented economy which relies on imports and to a production economy to go to real sectors rather than people keep on trading in real estate or gold and other things so what are so these are the structural shifts which a country needs now there are two angles to it the first angle is that can you do all of it my answer is no it took 25 years for india to actually you know implement some of these structural shifts so no short term uh, uh, you know uh, 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 angle to this you need to have 10 to 15 year consistent change process in order to get out of the current structure of economy to a structure which supports our needs number 2 who will do it if we continue looking at structural reforms from a populist political lens it will never happen it has never happened in other economies it will not happen here <clears throat> politics is likely to remain volatile till the foreseeable future and coalition governments will continue to come and they are not there to lead that how countries have done it they have basically <coughs> uh, delegated this function uh, to some institutions which are run by professionals insulated from political pressures i will repeat unless and until you empower institutions with people who are subject specialists and who are protected from political influences they they cannot deliver bureaucracy does not have the capability or the incentive to bring structural shift in my opinion pakistan should pick up one or two structural reform which are critical for us for instance pick up state owned enterprises pick up competitiveness or power sector try this model and show to the world that we can do it sentiment will start changing you will see in a year or two that yes pakistan is serious about changing the structures and then gradually other reforms will come uh, there is no way i see that revival of economy and structural shift happening in the current mindset and institutional uh, system of the country